upon Allah already seems to believe in Allah. That why would you call if I'm talking to somebody, I know they exist. But Allah says that they should believe in me. If they call on me, tell them I will answer them, but they must believe in me. So Allah is talking about a belief that's much different than the regular the regular type of belief we think. That they would believe that I would answer their call. When a human being when, as human beings, when we ask Allah for anything, we always assume, the first thing we assume is we look at the material causes that give us those things. We think that it's our job, it's our school, it's this, it's this person. But Allah says, no, He is the original cause of this. Yes, it comes through material means and mechanisms, but He is the first cause of this. It comes through Him. All of these smaller causes, if they exist by themselves, the end result will never come. وَلْيُؤْمِنُوا بِي لَعَلَّهُمْ يَرْشُدُونَ In order that they would be guided aright. And if this Abd, this servant, would do this, they would be guided aright. So this... In Tafsir al-Mizan, Alama Tabatabai gives these, these several points on this particular um, ayah from Qur'an, these seven points from this particular ayah of Qur'an, the way the supplicant has to approach Allah, how he has to approach Allah, what he has to believe about Allah. Now what is this dua? According to our imams, a dua has been described as two things. The first is dua is described in the traditions of the Imams as a sword or a wep weapon. The Prophet said, uh, الدُّعَى سِلَاحُ الْمُؤْمِنُ وَعْمُودِ الدِّينِ وَنُورُ سَمَوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ That the dua is the silah or the weapon of the believer, the foundation of the religion, and the light of the heavens and the earth. This call, this supplication, this prayer, it's a weapon. And then he, the Imam described it again. He said, not only is this dua a weapon but it's also a shield and when the Imam was asked how is this possible that it's a weapon or shield the Imam said that the dua is a weapon because it will it will avert or it will prevent excuse me it is a shield because it will prevent things that will happen to you bala or tragedies or problems that will happen to you so it is a shield against those things as human beings, we think that we are in control of our destiny. But Allah tells us that we're not. Every human being's destiny is controlled by certain things. One of those things is the dua that the human being does to Allah. So this is a shield against things that would happen to us. The second thing is that it's a weapon or a sword. And that's that when the human being supplicates to Allah, when he, can, when he or she continuously suppl supplicates to Allah, this causes additional good things to come to him or her. So a human being's destiny is changed depending upon how much they supplicate to Allah. There's a hadith of Imam Kadim alayhi salam. Let's have a salawat on Muhammad There's a hadith of Imam Kadim alayhi salam in which he said, to supplicate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala numerously and numerously and numerously because even if this dua is not answered the first time that the more supplication a person does that eventually it would be answered at some some point in time then the imam was asked why doesn't the dua get answered and the imam said that it could be for three reasons or three things, there could be three outcomes when a person does dua. The first thing is that Allah would answer it immediately. The second thing is that Allah would refrain from answering it because it's bad for a person. Either it's bad for their iman or it's bad for their destiny. And Allah would give them something better than this thing that they're asking for. Or the third thing is that Allah would save this reward or this benefit that they have for the hereafter. So for instance, a person prays in this world, they ask Allah for money or riches or something like this, and Allah prevents this from happening, because if the mu'min is given this, he would become corrupt, 
or he would spend it. And Allah knows this. So to prevent this, because Allah loves the abd, loves the servant, he doesn't give him or her this. He holds it back. Or sometimes they ask for it and Allah says, Allah says, I want to save it for the hereafter so Allah doesn't give it to them in this life. There's a man who came to Imam Ali alayhi salam. Let's have a salawat ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad for Imam Ali alayhi salam. A man came to Imam Ali alayhi salam and he prayed for Allah to remove fitna from him. And Imam Ali alayhi salam said, you don't know what you're praying for. And he said, what do you mean? And there's an ayah in the Quran that says that your family and your wealth can become a fitna for you. So Imam Ali said, be careful of what you pray for. Because sometimes human beings, when they pray for something, they don't understand what they're praying for. For instance, we see the immediate need of what we think we want. But we don't understand that if we get this, the effects that would, this would have in our life would be very bad. So what we are asking for, we don't truly want. So Imam Ali said that sometimes Allah doesn't give us this because He loves the Abd, He loves the servant. So He prevents the person from having this. Another reason that we don't immediately get our requests or our invocation from Allah there's a hadith by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam There's a hadith from the Prophet which says that Allah said to Jibreel, He said, Oh Jibreel, He said, when my abd, when my servant prays to me, He said, don't give it to him, withhold it from him. And when the one who is ungrateful the word used here is when the kafir, because kufr, the meaning of kufr is not just to hide or to reject Allah, but the meaning of kufr is also to be ungrateful. When the kafir is ungrateful, give it to him, quickly, give it to him. And he asked why, he said, because when the abd or the mu'min prays to me, he said, I love to hear his or her voice. I want to hear it again, and again, and again. But when the kafir prays to me, give it. I don't even like to hear it. Give him what he wants. So this was another reason that that a prayer is delayed. Now the biggest reason why prayers are delayed, according to Imam Ali alayhi salam, he says that a prayer is never answered with a memorized tongue but a forgetful heart. So in other words, when a person continuously memorizes something or goes through the motions of something like we typically do but the heart is forget forgetful or the heart is thinking about something else then Allah doesn't answer the prayer because the heart has to follow the tongue so we have to have presence of mind when we do dua and this is one of the reasons Imam Ali says is the prevention of dua now what is the benefit of dua the first prerequisite when we do dua for its acceptance is to understand that it is Allah that is the source of all power and creation when we in this verse when we talked about ubudiya or ownership that it is Allah who has true ownership not just of us but of this entire universe of all the events in this universe that everything that we see occurring, he can change it. So the first prerequisite is that the person ha a person has to understand, we have to understand that Allah is the one controlling everything. Even though we see all these other things. Salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. There is a hadith from Imam Hussein alayhi salam. A very beautiful hadith where he says, "Mada wajada man faqadak, wa ma alladhi faqada man wajadak." He says, "Oh Allah, the one who found you, 
What did he lose? The person who actually